Hello and welcome to my show on Ustream. This is Healing Word of Life and really looking at biblical, counsel, uh, biblical counseling information. My name is Laurie Smith and I'm glad you can join me. Um, I've been doing a, a few of these shows here and there over the course of about, oh, I don't know, eight months to a year. And I uh, haven't been able to do all that many because I have to keep canceling them, but I'm, I'm working on staying on a regular schedule. So thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And um, we're looking at a, a biblical counseling manual put out by Adam Pulaski and Steve Lynn. And um, they put this out many years ago, actually, and it's old. It, I, it's been around for a long time. I actually saw this uh, years and years ago, probably at least six years ago. And um, it's free on the web. You can grab it. It's um, it's just Biblical Counseling Manual, Adam Pulaski, P-U-L-A-S-K-I, or Steve Lynn, L-I-H-N. You can also find it as a course, on uh, a free course you can take on emmanuels.org, I-M-M-A-N-U-E-L-S.org. You have to go to their store if you want to access it. And the store um, has, a, it's a little free resource, at least it was, I should check that out. Um, it wasn't too long ago that I took a look. And um, you have to go to the store and it's there and it's free. You just click on it, it, it lets you right in and you can just do the study. And um, it, this particular manual is set up there as a course. So you can go through it and do the homework and uh, do the journaling or whatever they have set up there. And uh, I'm just looking at it um, mainly as part of my healing journey. And I also um, uh, took a course, biblical counseling course, um, with a, a school down in the States, Valley Bible. And um, it, Wayne Eric Johnston was the teacher. And I had to, it was like a, a what was it? It was a two year course, I think it was. And it's been a while now, but I got a certificate in biblical counseling and um, haven't been certified. So I'm not a certified counselor. I'm not a certified biblical counselor. I'm not a certified counselor of any kind. This is mainly my own healing journey that I'm kind of going through on all my shows here. And um, I'm, I've got an associate's in biblical studies and uh, working on a bachelor of ministry and still working on studies all the time. And just love God's word and love to share what he's done in my life and what I've seen him do in other people's lives around me. And I know, um, you know, it's just by the grace of God that I'm here and I'm able to, to, to do these shows, you know, and I'm just so thankful and I just want to share what I know that the Lord has done for me in my life and how he's blessed me, you know, and, and I just, I like to share his word. So thanks for being here. I appreciate it. I'm an author and I wrote three books mainly dealing with the abuse that I suffered as a child and uh, it wasn't so much to point fingers and name names and that sort of thing and, and wasn't so much all about retribution and, and justice, but I wanted the world to see what abused children go through from the eyes of a child of, of someone who was abused so I wanted the world to know you know that this sort of thing happens and many times it goes you know no one will know about it children die all the time you know because of abuse and if they don't die you know they're injured and they have to live this life you know and if it's not reported and they don't get any help you know they, they can really struggle and struggle and struggle and you know in my case there was um, intervention done my parents were brought up on charges both of them um, I'm the last of, of seven. I'm the seventh born, uh, the, the, the youngest child in the family. And um, we had social workers around and it was documented. But so many people's cases are not documented because there's no help for them. There wasn't any help for us anyway, even though we went through the system. But the abuse just continued on. But the thing is, is we have at least have documentation where so many other people don't. And they have no validation, no one to validate what happened to them. And I just like to be a voice out here, you know, for people who are struggling and to say, you know, not to give up. And there is hope, there is help. And I'm just kind of, by, like I said, by the grace of God and some really good friends, I'm still here. And um, just want to be a, a voice out here shouting out to people, do not give up. So thanks everybody for being here and I appreciate it. My shows are all dealing with adult topics. And, you know, if you're underage and under the age, uh, you know, uh, where you feel, you know, minors should not be listening to this material, and it's definitely for adults only. And um, so, you know, if you're not old enough to be listening, uh, have an adult check the show out. I say, actually, I used to say this on all my shows. I did a, a series of a thousand, or actually fifteen hundred, blog talk radio shows, all dealing with child abuse information. And um, I used to say that on all my shows because it's so important, right? And if you're a survivor. You know, this sort of sort of material can trigger people. You have to be in a safe place when you're listening. So, thanks everybody. We're gonna we're gonna get right into it. 
We're looking at a section in this in this PDF called uh, Barriers to Wholeness, Failure to Receive Forgiveness. And um, we, we looked at uh, bind, loose, and cast out last time. That was just a short, short little topic. But tonight, this is a bit of a, it's a sort of a longer one. It'll probably take us a few shows to get through it. And it's it's barriers to wholeness. So, you know, what, what would be a barrier to wholeness? Well, one of the, what they're talking about is failure to receive forgiveness. So, you know, we, we want to be whole. You know, Christ has made us whole. Christ, you know, if, we're, if we are free, and if, we're, if we're in Christ, we are free. We are free indeed. We, we are no longer uh, that, old, that old Lori. You know, we're not old, no longer that old person. If we're born again and we've received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and it's His life that we live now, really, because we died on the cross, and now it's His life, you know, that we live, and, and it's Him, and He lives through us. If that's true, you know, we shouldn't have, the, we shouldn't, unfortunately, like myself, have these issues that we're still dealing with, but we all know that we do. And it's a lot of it has to do with the flesh, and um, some of it just has to do with just not, maybe it's just all the flesh, I don't know, but some of it, uh, it just seems like some people maybe just uh, haven't moved on. And I know for myself there's several several issues that I'm still working with and probably just haven't given it up to the Lord. I, I think about it all the time actually because I'm like, wow, you know, Jesus said, you know, you're going to have trials, you're going to have tribulation. And it wasn't just, I don't even think he was just talking to, uh, about, you know, future, the you know, that the temple was going to be destroyed in 70 AD there and, or even the, the future destruction that's coming you know, for the second coming, but I just think that life is full of trials and trouble because man fell, because we're living in a fallen world, we're living in, in a in a fallen existence here, you know, and of course now being born again, I'm no longer from this, so this is not my home, and but I'm still here and I'm still in the flesh, and so we are going to have problems, issues are going to come up, and we are going to have trials and, and suffering and pain, and that just goes along with being in this flesh body um, but we know you know we're in Christ so we're not a people without hope praise God you know we got to get into those into the into the New Testament and well, I love to be in the Old Testament actually I study more in the, in the Old Testament than I do in the New but you know we got to remember what the especially what the Apostle Paul said because he was very very good at describing you know what we have in Christ you know and we have forgiveness so failure to receive forgiveness really is a barrier to wholeness and I agree with what they have to say here and they said, uh, perspective, they said, it's purely an act of God alone, by His grace, that we have been forgiven of all our sins. We did nothing to earn it, either by fasting or praying. We simply receive it by acknowledging our sinfulness and realizes that Christ died for and freely gives redemption by the forgiveness of our sins. And we are made whole and washed clean in our conscience and kept that way by the word, water of the word. So these, they, they reference Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. And, uh, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. Amen. First John 1 John 1.9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Hebrews 10.22, Let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. So, in Christ, you know, we've been redeemed. He 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 paid this the, the penalty for our sin. You know, he became sin. He took it upon himself, you know, at the cross, you know, to give us life eternal with him, so that we would no longer be separated from God. We would be brought back into right standing with God. It's his righteousness, not mine. So if that's the case, you know, then I have been forgiven. But I know I don't I don't necessarily I don't struggle with the issue of, of receiving forgiveness. But I know that there are people that do, and that's why we're going through this study. And uh, you know I, I because I know and recognize and realize that I still and I never will attain perfection in this flesh body it is not going to happen. There's only one perfect, and that's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I know I'm going to mess up, and I I mess up all the time, and I have to repent, and I have to go before the Lord on a regular basis every day pretty much sadly enough and I have to sit there and I, I have to confess that sin and you know ask the Lord tell him, Lord you, I need your help you know I don't you know help me to never do that again whatever it is you know and it's you know I think it's just being con we are we just need to pay attention to what we're doing and get into the word and find out what we're supposed to be doing and what we're not supposed to be doing and then try and then live it allow Christ to live in us 
the Holy Spirit to help to guide us to train us to 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 be you know our teacher hallelujah you know and how are we gonna learn apart from God's Word it isn't gonna happen so it doesn't mean there's not good people out there you know that you know there's there's always gonna be good people out there but it, it has nothing to do with that it's it's his righteousness and by putting on Christ and putting off the old glory putting on Christ and and every day walking in this newness of life which is the life of in Christ with Christ because of Christ hallelujah you know I can walk free and we all can right and so but when we make when we, when we make mistakes or, or mess up we do need to go before the Lord and confess and we need to confess that sin first of all acknowledge it before God he knows that he's seen it he's already knew he knew we were gonna do it and it's like you know try not to do it again my big problem is I just keep repeating things but it's like I'm like oh Lord oh, forgive me <laughs> because he knows our weaknesses you know so there's hope it says some do not receive forgiveness because they are still trying to be good enough on their own merit striving to be perfect under the law but instead we are to be in listening obedience to Christ and his word trusting in his righteousness and the practice of his presence rather than practice the presence of an old man of the old man the old flesh nature right it is by the blood of the Lamb and by our testimony to all that Jesus did on the cross and in his resurrection that our, sin, that our sins are forgiven. And by his resurrection we live in righteousness and we are to act forgiven by what Jesus did. Receiving this truth is our responsibility and God will not do this for us. So if we're struggling in this and, we don't, and, we're, and we're just thinking, oh, I'm such a low life, you know, how could I even call myself a Christian? Am I really born again? You know, and not receiving forgiveness even though we've, it's already been done. The moment we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, whatever time that is in our life, you know, that we do, and we're forgiven. Because he did it 2,000 years ago on the cross, we were forgiven. But when we receive it, and we say, Lord, thank you for taking my place on the cross. And thank you that I am forgiven because you, you took my sin upon yourself. And, and I am now made the right, your righteousness. You know, God sees me right in right standing because of it's your righteousness that covers us it's you know we're covered by his blood by his by his righteousness by by his very being hallelujah so it's like you know we need to remember that and i know because sometimes i there's uh, there's days where i feel worse than other days when i'm sitting there going lord you know thank god for your mercy and your grace and i have to tell him that every day i'm like thank you lord for your grace and mercy for not wiping me out you know because you know i'm just a person on this planet too in a flesh body even though i've been renewed reborn recreated new creature unto christ hallelujah i'm still finding myself you know doing some of these old fleshy things you know and then uh, this old way of thinking this old way of behaving about certain things I'm like, Lord, I need to grow. I need to, I can't do it on my own. See, we could never be good enough. We could never really grow. We could never really mature without God and His, and His, and His, and His precious Word and His precious Holy Spirit and His precious Son. So we have to give it up to them. You know, we have to make sure we give it up to Him and allow them to, you know, all God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit to help us to do this because we can't do it on our own. And it said, but he says, God will not do this for us. So, you know, I, I, I know I've known Christians before in the past, actually, um, who were very much um, uh, really depressed most of the time because they felt that they really, how could they be forgiven? How could God really have forgiven them for what they'd done? And I was like, when you actually made the decision to accept his precious son who died for that very purpose, bring us back into right standing and they still have problems with it and so that's why it's really important to study this out and you know if a person is really struggling with it to make sure that you do because it's you don't want to go through your life in condemnation you know like I mean even the Apostle Paul said now therefore brother you know we're no longer in, con in condemnation Romans 8 12 therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh and 10 10 4 uh, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth and Luke 21, 36, Watch ye therefore and pray always that, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. And Revelation 12, 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto, unto the death. 
And they said, allow God to search your heart and kneel as sinners before him. Acknowledge and assume that you may have been trying to deal with sin by your efforts, by your own efforts, right? Our own efforts. Condemning yourself or failing, judging yourself is not good enough. Uh, believing that your sin was too gross for God to forgive. And let God deal with these subjective feelings. Change your focus to the objective fact that only Christ can deal with your sin. Um, that your responsibility is to accept that you are a sinner and that it is Christ's blood that makes you a saint when you confess and repent. By an act of faith, receive forgiveness by Christ and from that point on, act forgiven. Guilt, shame, and conviction is to bring us to the point of confession and repentance which brings forth a conveying of righteousness. Uh, we are to walk in this spirit, the spirit of righteousness, Christ himself. Amen. So Psalm 19, 12 through 13, it says, Who could understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great, from the great transgression. And uh, Romans 7, 15 through 20. Um, for that which I do not allow, that for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I that do I. If that I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now that is that then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. Now if I do that. I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Yeah, because what he says, I mean, what the Apostle Paul is saying there is like, you know, we know what's right and what's wrong according to God's Word. You know, you get into God's Word and you start learning. And yet we do it anyway. And yet we've been born again and we are no longer, you know, have any business doing those things. And like you see, you know, we don't want to do them, and we're still doing them. And I find myself doing this all the time. That's why I'm trying to allow. I can't do it by myself. By myself, I really can't. I try to just allow the Holy Spirit. I'm like, you've got to be my trainer, my teacher, my guide, and I have to be willing to change, you know, and make these changes, and to turn it around, you know, with repent, you know, turn it around and change it, and you know, be right, be holy as our as our Father is holy. Be be righteous allow Christ's righteousness to shine through through me you know and uh, if we're not staying on it steady I think it's very hard to do I know myself you know like I, I'm in the word a lot but it doesn't mean that I'm necessarily doing what I'm reading you know I'm studying a lot and I love the Word of God and then I and then I find myself two minutes later having some thought that I shouldn't be having about somebody just because I'm cranky and don't particularly like their attitude um, instead of praying for them what the what am I doing there's the tongue you know and we're going to be held accountable for every idle word that we speak. <laughs> so I'm going to be seriously held accountable. But I know that the Lord, the Lord has forgiven me. I've already asked for forgiveness. I already, I received it at the cross. Amen. Because I died with Him and was reborn, resurrected. I'm going to stand in judgment anyway for my works. You know, this is a serious issue. Because. I mean, do I want my works just blown away in the chaff, or do I want my works to, do I want God to be pleased with my works? It's not about rewards. I don't care about rewards. I'm not rewards motivated. Um, I just want Him to be pleased, you know, and say, "Good job, faithful servant. Good enough for me." If I could even get that, <laughs> I'd be pretty happy because I'm seriously, you know, I, I, you know, I can't. Obviously, none of us can make it on our own. It is only because of God's mercy and God's grace. And, the, and, and his righteousness that there's we're not good we're not I don't even think we're capable of good but he is good and so it's his righteousness and his love and his mercy and compassion and goodness and everything that is good that I'm supposed to allow to flow from me because it's from him not from me so we could never be good enough but it's by allowing God to shine through, you know, the love of God to shine through us. And 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 loving our neighbor as ourselves. Loving God first place, loving our neighbor as ourselves. You know, you can't buy your way into heaven. Nobody can. I can't. Nobody can. We can't do enough good works. But still yet, we are to do what he said. You know? And so, yeah, I mean, we're going to make mistakes. That's the issue. I, I've, I've actually seen, I've actually talked to some Christians who think that they've made it and that they're already there. And I'm like, good on you there buddy because I don't know have you taken a look at the mirror you know what I mean you're still here and you're still in the flesh 
and if we could record your thoughts, it might be interesting to see. You know what I mean? Uh, well, only God knows. God, God knows what the intents of our heart is, and God knows what is going on in our mind and what's going on in our thought processes, and and how where He is in our life, where He stands, and just how much we care about what He told us in His Word, and just how much we we want to do what He's told us to do. And then when we ask for forgiveness, and we go before Him and we confess our sins, we're forgiven. And we can know that we are. Because God doesn't change. You know, He's not wishy-washy. And He doesn't, oh, I'll forgive Him today, but maybe not tomorrow. You know, He's just always the same. Today, yesterday, and, and, and forever. So, you know, He's given us His word that we are forgiven. If we confess our sins, and we, and He knows in our heart that we're really trying to make, we're trying to, uh, not in our own in our own abilities but we're trying to learn and grow by his Holy Spirit and by his word and by by him you know then he knows who we're his right so we don't have to be in condemnation you know and but then again we need to be remain humble and I think you know there's a difference between humility and being under condemnation you know and so like they said guilt shame and conviction is to bring us to the point of confession which it does and it did for me for sure and repentance, which brings forth the covering of righteousness. So, you know, we're to walk in the spirit, the spirit of righteousness, Christ himself. And the change portion they have here, they say, um, we are not only to deal with specific acts of sin, but with its roots. And the structure of sin in the human personality originated when we turned from the truth in God to embrace a lie about him. So as we respond to life from our darkened heart and mind, sinful thoughts and deeds flowed forth as water from a polluted, polluted fountain. And our heart becomes this reservoir of unconscious, disordered motivations and responses. Well, without God, I mean. Because I wasn't born again until very late age, 42. So, I mean, I didn't really have God in my life until the age of 42. So, I got a long, you know, road of these <laughs> issues of polluted fountains and, you know, dis dis disordered motivations and responses. I mean, I thought I was a good person because I didn't want to go around hurting people, but... It had, you know, I was not a good person, you know, and I'm still not. It's Christ who lives and dwells within me that is good, amen. So, you know, they're saying, we deal with this by no longer living by our feelings, but by our will and our will based on the word of God, which in time will change the root of our being. So it's these, it is a root issue, and it is issue, it, 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 unless we're willing to really look at what's going on in our life, like this. Let's just say there's just something you know I'm doing that I know because I know I do this all the time actually because I'm I'm constantly in trouble you know not doing what God told me to do and what He says in His Word and then having to repent about it and if I if I want to actually grow I'm gonna have to get to the root and the root is probably more than anything pride because that's that's Satan that's him all over you know his issue was pride. And um, so it very well could be a pride issue. I wouldn't doubt it. it has a lot, probably doesn't have a lot to do with most of my problems. And also, um, um, what do you want to call it? Lust. Maybe lust. I mean, it, more than likely that's what it is. So if I can't get to the root of it, it's, it's not going to change. I'm just going to keep doing, just keep doing what I'm doing. And people will, not just me. Like anybody who's in Christ, who's still walking in this flesh body here, you know, born again, loves God. And still, we're never going to reach perfection here, you know. But we're if we're not growing, you know, if we're not if we're not manifesting, you know, this this new life in Christ, and we're not growing, and we're not maturing, and we're not making progress in there, you know, then it's kind of like um, it's like a sort of a crop failure. It's like. Little, you know, you're just kind of stunted, you know, next to the wheat that's really growing up and it's beautiful. And you got this little stalk down here with a couple of sprigs on it. All because we don't want to surrender completely and be in complete obedience, you know, and I think it has a lot to do with it. And then we feel guilty. So then we're like, oh, Lord, forgive me. You know, that whole guilt trip thing, you know, just like it, just like in the book of, of uh, Judges there, you know, with the children of Israel. I, was just, I just read Judges. And you know they 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 were they 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 just forsook the Lord and they just went and worshipped all these idols and took on all the gods and religions around them, 
and then uh, they were chastised. They were they were in judgment, you know, and they had to face discipline by from God. And He let certain people, you know, attack and and, and take them over for twelve years here and so many years there by certain groups in the area. And then they'd repent. It's this whole cycle of you know they'd repent. They'd be like, Lord, you know, we've sinned. We, you know, we want to come back to you and we'll forsake these gods. They're not even gods, these idols. And you're the true and living God, you know, help us. So he would, he'd send a judge to deliver them. You know, most people who read the Bible know the cycle of judges. And it's just like, you know, repentance and then sin and falling into that whole sin trap and then idolatry and, and, and then repentance again because of discipline and judgment, right? And, I mean, that's not very fun. It's not a fun way to be. You know, I'd like to make some progress and get off the the, the, the judge's wheel. You know what I mean? Like, I'd like, I mean, really, it, it's got to it's got to be. It, it should be better than that. You know, our our devotion to God and our love to God. Um, you know, we should be honoring God by by honoring His word and knowing what He's told us to do and doing it. And so, you know, I think if we just get to the root of these issues like they're talking here you know we we may be able to dig out some of that stuff right i i, I know there's all kinds of studies on getting to root issues and i'm i'm into biblical counseling information so i'm very much into this stuff and i i've gotten into a lot of root issues for a lot of my stuff that i've that i've done and mainly dealing with my childhood and the, the way that i was brought up and people say well you can't blame that on your parents but if they're your teachers and you're learning from them and all the people in, around you, then it's certainly um, it, it's a setup for a fall at a very young age. And so, you know, if those are your mentors, you're gonna you're going you are going to learn from them. And I did. I learned a really lot a lot of very very bad bad stuff, and a lot of a lot of very harmful stuff even for myself. You know. And so um, I've had to get to a lot of root stuff, and I'm still working on it. And so I don't know if we ever get to a point in our lives where we could say, hey, I'm done, I'm perfect, I'm there. I mean, it's like, I don't think so. I think we're fooling ourselves if we do. We cannot be, no one, there's no perfect, no one perfect here. There's one perfect, and that's his name, is Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And so, you know, that's God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. God is perfect, amen. And so, you know, who better to ask for help? The perfect one, the one with the answers, praise God. The one with the one who is our help, right? That's who we need to ask for help. And so that's why I don't really look to secular material for help. I look to God's word because to me it, it just it is my salvation. Jesus is the word become flesh. Hallelujah, and Yeshua, my salvation. Hallelujah, praise God. So they say your ignorance will destroy you and your family. Indifference will harden your heart until you feel that you cannot forgive yourself anymore and give up entirely. Biblical change is a process. It says realize you cannot handle or deal with sin, but realize you are completely dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess and repent daily. It says see Jesus, take your sin into and upon himself, setting you free. And act forgiven. Honor Christ by thinking and doing and being what the word says to think, to speak, and to act. Daily growing into the image of Christ. And that's right, how can we do that if we don't know what it says? If we just don't take the time to know what it says. It's real easy to read. I'm always in the Bible studying, like I said. And um, it's easy to just read and read and read and read. But at some point you got to stop and you actually have to really soak, let it soak in what it's saying. Because, you know, it's easy to read a book and just scan through it. Oh, it's great. It was a great story. And not pick up much from it, you know. Literally, we have to sit there and just soak it in and put it to in here and put it in here in the heart it's not just up in the head head knowledge that has very little to do with it it's some of it it needs to be in the heart you know and so i know for myself that's what i'm doing you know and i know that i can't do it by myself and i know that that there's no there's no way of, of doing any of this by myself it's it has to come from god and so you know i just give it up to god and i'm thankful for his mercy and his compassion and they say, they quoted, uh, they actually referenced Ephesians 4, 17 through 18. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, 
having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because uh, of the blindness of their heart. And they reference Romans 1, 18 through 23. Uh, well, this is a great book of Romans here. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven and against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. And professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Yeah, see, man thinks they have, they, 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 we all think we have, we, we, we can do this. We don't need God. That's what the world says. Well, we don't need God. And if we do, it'll be some other God. It won't be the true and living God. And there's only one true and living God. That's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That is our Father Creator. Hallelujah. And, you know, he, we know. It's very obvious that we know who He is. And if we're not willing to allow Him to help us, we're not going to get very far. And so, I mean, a lot of times I sit around and I'll pray. I'll just be like, Lord, you know, I can't do this. I can't do any of it. I'm willing to be a, a, an empty vessel or somewhat empty. And you come in and you've got to move through me, you know. And then I just pray that, you know, that I'm actually open to receive what he's doing and what, what he wants me to do, you know, and what, what his will is for my life. And mostly I think I'm pretty closed off, even though as I'm saying, you know, you could be uh, in the Word 24 hours a day and it's like, you know, it's, it does, it's, it, it's, it's not just, that's just not the issue. It's a heart issue. It's what's going on in the heart. And whether we not, we really take God's word seriously and actually believe what it says is true, or are we just, like they, you know, this is why somebody might be struggling with this sort of thing, and with forgiveness issues and, um, and any other issues, you know, is because we're not, uh, really not wanting to change that much. You know, a lot of it has to do with that. You know, we get comfortable in our old ways of feeling and old ways of thinking and that old sin nature, that old flesh uh, nature, you know, that was me before I was born again. And that, that I, I, I stayed like that for a long, long time, you know, so it's hard to let that go. Because I'm like, well, then who am I? If I don't have, you know, I can't really recreate, who am I? Well, I'm not supposed to be. It's Christ who's supposed to be living through me. See, that's where I think that pride thing is coming in. So there's, you know, if we're not willing to really take a serious hard look at what's going on with ourselves, and, and really, I mean, because it's painful. It really is. A lot of times, a lot of this stuff is very painful to deal with because it's coming from, you know, some, it might have been sort of brought on by sources of pain and struggle and suffering. And I know mine was, a lot of mine was. Not all of it, but a lot of it. And so, you know, some of it's very, very painful to really want to get a hold of and deal with and I know I have a lot a lot to work on and, and I can't do it like I said on my own when it has to come from the Lord it's just gonna have to be God working in me and through me and you know to to make to make this change but I have to be willing or it isn't gonna happen if I close my heart and harden my heart um, it's there's gonna be no progress made right and those those roots won't be rooted out you know and, I, and I'm not gonna gr grow and mature in, in Christ so and I don't want that I want to be you know, when I go to meet my Lord and Savior, when I go to be with Him, praise God, for eternity, to serve Him, to worship Him, hallelujah, you know, I want Him to be pleased with me. That's right. And I just, you know, that's what I want. So I need to be open to allowing Him to really, to really manifest in my life completely. We have, we have to surrender all of ourselves. And that's not easy because part of me wants to keep some of this back. You know, it's like, really? Surrender all? And it's like, yeah. God gave His only Son, His only begotten Son. We're to give all of ourselves to God. It, it's only, it only makes sense. And, uh, but it's for the better. It's for the best, right? And so this is what I, I'm really s just like a baby Christian. I've been studying for a long time now, almost eight years in the Word. And, you know, I haven't moved very far towards the meat. I'm still in the milk. And I mean, I can see how, how far 
I haven't gotten, you know. And that's why I'm like, wow, I gotta, I need, uh, I'm happy to be doing these shows, and I hope that you all get something out of these too. Um, the next show we're gonna do, this will be next Monday, God willing, we're here, if the Lord wills. We're gonna look at some interesting information from uh, Wayne Eric Johnson. This was the course that I took. It's Chronicles of Transformation. It's a journal, and there's lots of scripture, and it's it's a, it's it's his t his sort of his writing uh, a, sort of an article on remembering God's forgiveness, remembering God's forgiveness scriptures. Uh, regarding sins committed prior to salvation, so this would be issues that we maybe sinned, uh, things that we did before we were born again, and I have a whole string of them, but this is where somebody could be held up in not realizing that when we, when, when, when we're born again, we've been forgiven of all of that, but th there he's got all scripture references here regarding sins committed since faith in the gospel, and remembering God's forgiveness journal, so there's a journal there. And then um, we'll move on to the next section, which is a healing presence after that. So this might take another another show or two. We'll see how long that takes. And um, God bless you. God keep you till the next time. And I appreciate you being here with me. Thanks very much. And um, if you want to catch my show tomorrow night, uh, God willing, I'll be back. Um, we're looking at, um, I think it's uh, Persecuted Church Worldwide, I think is on um, Tuesday nights. But... I'll have to check that out. But I do have a show Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights at the same time. I'm going to try to be here for these regular now because I'm working into a schedule that seems to be working. And uh, it's just up to the Lord. So I just give all the all the glory and all the, the, the thanksgiving to the Lord for allowing me to do this. And um, I just uh, I just pray for you all and hope that, you know, you just reach out to God. And, and if you're struggling and you're having a hard time, like I always tell people on all my shows, you know, don't run from God. Run to Him. Because I used to run from God. Now I run right to him. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. So, God bless you. God keep you till the next time.